Well, it's a pleasure to meet you again here in uh, France. It was a wonderful event. Um, first, uh, Moon Worship of Kind. And your project is actually getting a rover to the moon as a first mission, and then you have a whole bunch of things planned. Maybe you can talk. Absolutely. Thank you very much um, for having us here. Um, yeah, the Moon Village uh, Association workshop is for us a great opportunity to um, explain what we as PT scientists will do with our mission to the moon because um, we plan to have not just a rover uh, on the moon, we plan to have a complete mission. So we have an, our own spacecraft, our moon lander, yes. going from Earth orbit to the moon and carrying even with the first mission two rovers. So we are um, working together with Audi and Vodafone as our two main uh, technology uh, partners. Um, together with Audi, we developed the Audi Luna Quadro the rovers which we bring to the moon. Um, together with Vodafone, we will uh, build the first LTE network on the moon to communicate to those rovers. That's so, and that's what we can bring in here to the Moon Village Association workshop, because of course the Moon Village is for us a very important goal for the future. So what is the main objective of your first mission to the moon? The first mission to the moon will bring us to the landing site of Apollo 17. So we want to bridge the gap between the past where humanity left um, the moon. So 45, 46 years ago. And that's why we are going back to Apollo 17 to see what are the remains? How does the remains look like? So what is the decay? We want to measure the decay of the remains, especially the point of interest for us because we are um, respecting the protection of the heritage sites. Yes. So we are very engaged with For All Moonkind and all are those initiatives who want uh, want to keep that as best as possible. But on the other hand, there's a scientific interest on how does that stuff look like? So after 45 years, is there dust on it? Is it still there? Is it broken to apart? Or this, un, this, this really harsh environment of the moon, the no, no atmosphere leading to temperatures every second week or every, every uh, 14 days to minus 180 degrees, plus 130 degrees, 500 times the radiation. What does it mean to all the materials which were used? And just as a point of uh, curiosity, the LRV, the lunar roving vehicle of Apollo 17, was built in a rush. So there's a lot of material which are not space graded. They are plastic chairs, the garden chairs actually, what they use. It, this, this device was duct taped. They using they use pi uh, piano wire, foils, and so on. So everything what is not in that in the those years were considered a space grade. But for us looking into the future now, what does it mean for the Moon Village? Do we need these gold plated things, or can it use can can we use other materials as well if we build a permanent settlement? So that is what our first mission is about: going back to Apollo going back to Apollo 17, conducting an, a number of measurements and, and science experiments uh, with these two rovers um, and with our spacecraft. So is it mostly a scientific mission that you're planning to do, or are there some objectives, uh, commercial objectives as well? We want to be, our, and that's what is behind this mission, we want to be the first private company which returns to the moon. So. That is one of the objectives. Uh, the second one is that we want to showcase and demonstrate that we are able to deliver this message and to build uh, space qualified materials, uh, uh, space qualified um, equipment, um, so and demonstrate those. Um, the question is it an, um, a, a pure science mission? When you go to Apollo, then, and when you do it around the 50th anniversary of yes. Apollo 13, not 17, but 13, it's everything but an, a pure 
science mission. Yes, we have a lot of scientific instrument um, with our 100 kilo of payload, which we can carry to the moon surface. It's the two rovers plus still 30 kilograms of payload what we take with us. There's a lot of scientific experiments from our partners um, with us, but it will be a very, very heavily media focused mission. So we will be have a 24 by 7 coverage of this entire event from the launch pad to, till the end, the entire two weeks. And, and what is next for a um, part-time scientist in terms of the moon exploration? What are you going to do next after this mission? Oh, well, this first mission is for us just the first step. So we plan on continuous missions in a cadence of every year or if we are able to franchise our system even more than, than one mission a year to, uh, over the next 10 years. Uh, so that's, that's what we are looking for at the moment. And there are other interesting sites. So what we have heard here in this um, Moon Village Association workshop was also water. The um, detection, the harvesting of water is the most important thing for anything what's going on uh, on the moon. So that can be in one of our next missions. So going back to the poles is, is one of the important things where you have eternal light, things like that. So our aim is to build an infrastructure on the moon, infrastructure for communications, for navigation and, per, uh, and, and, and positioning, to have a pre more precise landing there, but also um, how to use the regolith. What is it that excites you personally about Mission to the Moon? Why do you want to do it? Uh, for me, it's a great privilege to, um, to be part of the, um, the team which, which really is behind the Mission to the Moon. And the, I mean, the, the, the curiosity in doing things with a big impact for humanity, that's what, what drives me personally. Uh, beside all the, the outreach, beside all the, the commercial activities behind, be because if you want to do it to, to become rich, then that's the wrong place. Um, I mean, yes, a few people make money out of space activities, but um, it's very selected. You do space because you believe in something greater than money. So in the past, space project used to be part of the nation states program yeah. public money was mostly involved now we have private money um, venture capital what's next how are we going to sponsor space projects in the future i think there was a trend over the last years and you're right with with the entire new space economies with the venture capitalists got looking into first they were very specialized for space now we have broader venture capitalists um, which are investing uh, in this in this market um, and there's always this, this, a demand for bringing non-space actors non-space companies into the space field and I think um, we have shown that, that that's possible because that's what we do. So with Audi and Vodafone, two partners, two key technology partners, which are definitely not space actors, are a part of, of this uh, an adventure. With Audi, for instance, we developed the rover together. So the, the entire area of um, advanced manufacturing, yes. 3D printing, center 3D printing, 3D metal printing um, is something what we have done together with, with Audi. Um, with Vodafone we develop now the, the LTE on the moon, so we check is, if, is it possible to build an LTE tower, a cell tower like you have it here on Earth on the moon? Um, can we use the same frequencies? Um, is the, the wave propagation the same? Is the law of physics? Um, th the same and, and what does it mean on, on the moon? Nobody has done it, but we think that using technology that we have here on Earth, it's also good to have on, on, on the moon. So what is next for us? Uh, what is next for the entire market? Yes, the, the, the I think consensus is that space became sexy again. And so it is attractive for a number of people and it's attractive for, for big capital as well. Uh, if all these dreams will come true, that is a different story when we talk about space resources or, or, or asteroid mining or these things. These are very long-term investments. But on the short end, I think 
uh, there's an interesting engagement and I think the non-space actors will open their eyes and might be farmer insurance, uh, health insurance, uh, may it be agriculture, may it be uh, mining companies uh, which want to test their equipment, all of them, anatomous driving um, and so on. I think that's a, that's a very long list where I think I'm just um, pointed out the tip of the iceberg. Yes. Uh, space is everywhere and space is also something what should be in everybody's awareness. Um, yes. So a uh, final question you talked about space being a part of the awareness on a kind of broader scale as the population. Do you believe that it's important for us, for humans, to go into space to explore? Is it in our blood? Do we have to do it? Does it, does it. change our perception of the world that we currently live in? Um, I think, yeah, uh, it is it is part of our genes. And if, if we wouldn't have um, discovered other continents with ships, other areas by walking over over the next mountain, crossing the, the next river or so, then we wouldn't have discovered the world as, as it is and we wouldn't have developed the world as it is. And uh, we at PT Scientists, we have one interesting clip um, uh, created together with Audi and the German um, science fiction author Frank Schätzing, um, which describes this, this gene, this what drives you, this explorer gene, as he calls it, to go further. And the logical consequence is then to leave our planet Earth and to go into the um, universe. And so m Moon is around the corner. It's yes. just 400,000 kilometers away. And to go to the Moon, we will learn a lot um, before going to Mars or anywhere else, even outside the galaxy. Will we see that in our lifetime? I don't think so. Um, it will be another 50 years or so plus. But uh, is it possible? I think so. And um, I think when, when you talk to astronauts or when you listen to astronauts and had this chance, you always hear they have this overview thing. Uh, they saw the planet Earth as very fragile, planet in, in, the, in the cosmos with this very thin atmosphere uh, what keeps us alive and I think that's an, that opens eyes, that, that changes perception of, of, of people of these astronauts. Unfortunately they are only just a handful of, of them. Yes. So how to get, get that done to the people on earth which have their daily life and think that their life is the most important one and fight their own stuff uh, for no reasons if we see it to the broader context and that goes up to our politicians yeah, who, who, who lead this world. Um, I mean so it's, it's becoming very metaphoric yes. but um, I do think that expecting that the world or that the earth as we live in is a very fragile thing yes. it's something what is much more needed and we have to fight for it um, to overcome all these uh, trouble and problems we have on, on our planet. Absolutely. So, and uh, good luck doing what you do, democratizing space exploration. Thank good you very much. This is your project. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.